I'm KP. If you're into trying out new tech in the Web3 and smart contract world and have been hearing about Foundry but haven't had the time to check it out, this video is for you. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on what Foundry is, why I think it's worth using, and how to get started with it. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, what is Foundry? Foundry is a tool chain for developing smart contracts um, that helps manage dependencies, compile projects, run tests, deploy projects, and interact with the blockchain from the command line. Um, it's basically written in Rust and it's really fast. It's faster than other tools like Hardhat that you may be used to or Truffle even, and has a unique approach to testing smart contracts. So it allows developers to write tests in Solidity rather than JavaScript and manipulate the test EVM environment to an advanced level. It also introduces developers to various types of testing, such as fuzzing and differential testing. Um, and the importance of testing smart contracts cannot be overstated because as security exploits on smart contracts can lead to the loss of millions of dollars and hinder the adoption of blockchain technology. So what Foundry does is it can help developers go beyond the testing capabilities of other tools like Hardhat to ensure the security of their smart contracts. Let's talk about what it consists of. It consists of Forge. Forge is an Ethereum testing framework. It's basically like Truffle, Hardhat, or DApp tools. There's also Cast. It's basically a Swiss army knife for interacting with EVM smart contracts, uh, sending transactions and getting chain data. And then last but not least, there's Anvil. It's a local Ethereum node similar to Ganache of Truffle, uh, with Truffle that you use with Truffle or even Hardhat network. So let's talk about how fast is Foundry? Short answer, it is blazing fast. Long answer, Foundry aims to be fast in its code compilation and testing processes. So what happened is the team conducted a benchmark test to measure the speed of building a project with different caching scenarios. And so the results showed that Foundry compilation was consistently faster than other tools with a speed increase of 1.7 to 11.3 times faster, depending on the amount of caching involved. These results were obtained using the default compiler settings, but it is possible that performance could be further improved by modifying the settings. Under the section testing benchmarks, you can see how fast Foundry is on some repositories. While a tool like DAP tools took 268 seconds, Forge, a Foundry, was able to do the same thing, but in only 800 milliseconds. That's a whopping speed up of 335x. Next, let's talk about why use Foundry. If you still haven't been convinced, let's go ahead and see what a typical testing in Foundry looks like. Many developers test Solidity code using JavaScript or TypeScript. Um, so this can actually be inconvenient as it requires a lot of boilerplate, large dependencies and configuration files. In addition, using Ethereum numbers in JavaScript often leads to compatibility issues and decreased productivity. Testing in JavaScript also means that developers must be familiar with some, some tools like Mocha and Ethers.js or Web3.js. So it increases the barrier to entry for Solidity developers. So what Foundry does is it, is it allows developers to write tests in Solidity rather than JavaScript. So allowing them to focus on writing good tests without the added complexity of using JavaScript in the first place. A simple Solidity test would look like this. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get started here with writing our smart contract here, how you would use, uh, uh, I'm just gonna show an example of how to write tests in Foundry, and then later we're gonna install Foundry and um, basically copy paste the code and run some tests there. So first um, I have my prog Pragma Solidity, I'm gonna be using 8 uh, 0.8.17. So I'm gonna be writing a, a contract called Foo. So let's just have a very simple example. So I'm gonna have, um, variable x to keep track of um, a, a, an integer value. So I'm gonna have the default value be one. And then I'm just gonna have a, one function called set, which is going to set the value of x. So whatever we pass in, we're gonna set that to x. And then last but not least, we're gonna have a function called double, which will basically double the number. So we're gonna do two times x. So it's a very simple um, example here, uh, contract foo. Uh, doesn't do anything other than these two functionalities here. So in Foundry, uh, again, we're gonna be doing this in Foundry later on, but here, I just wanted to show an example here how to do it in Foundry. So in Foundry, um, you could have something like foo test, 
uh, because remember that in Foundry, it's not like hard hat or Truffle where we have to use JavaScript or TypeScript to write a different test cases. We can use Solidity to write the test for our smart contracts. So I, I have a contract here, so I can basically <clears throat> um, initialize the contract called foo here. Um, and then next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a function called setup, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. Basically, I'm going to be setting up new foo, foo equals new foo. So this setup, um, basically, the state of the contract uh, gets reset before each of the tests is run. Um, and uh, with this setup uh, function being called each time after deployment. So think of it like a JavaScript before each block. So this is basically, you can think of it as before each block on JavaScript that you may be familiar with. So it basically resets um, um, the state of the contract before each test. All right, uh, let's write our first test, test here. So I'm gonna be testing for test double um, and then public. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be requiring uh, foo.x is equal to one because remember that we want to reset it every time. So just to make sure that it is reset, the default value of x is one. So I'm going to be requiring that it is also equal to one before we execute our test. Then uh, I'm going to be calling the function foo double. So which should double the value of x now. And then I'm going to be testing uh, for the val new value of foo.x, which should be equal to two because um, the value of x is changed by multiplying by two here after you call the double here. So that's basically it. So so it's a, it's a, this is a very simple unit test. Um, and so one thing to keep in mind is functions prefixed with test uh, are run as a test case. So it's a very, uh, you have to have a prefix test in order to mark it as one of the unit test cases. All right, let's uh, create one more test cases here, test case here. Um, so I'm gonna have a function called test fail double just to make sure that we're covering all base cases so again we're going to do the same thing here uh foo.x is equal to one then i'm going to be doubling it uh, then um, what i'm going to do is foo.x equal to four so this should fail uh so basically a failing unit test um basically starts with the prefix test fail this is a very specific keyword you have to put it in otherwise it's it's the test itself is going to fail here we're basically saying that this test that we're writing is supposed to fail so the failing is intentional on our part so uh, to uh, to um to make sure that uh, we um you know declare our test cases as such we need to start our fun uh, our function name with test fail um, and this is basically the inverse of the test test prefix here that we wrote uh, earlier. So if the function does not revert, the test fails. So that's basically how this um, test fail is supposed to work. So this is how easy it is to write uh, test cases in Foundry. So we're going to take a look at um, this after in a little bit after we install Foundry on our local machine. But uh, that's it for, for now. As you can see, we're using Solidity to test our Solidity code, which is much, much more efficient than using JavaScript or TypeScript. It's just natural to do so. Next, let's, let's talk about fuzzing. Fuzzing is a testing technique that involves providing invalid, unexpected, or random data to a computer program as input in order to test its behavior and identify potential vulnerabilities. It is often used to test the robustness and security of software by attempting to crash the program or trigger an, an, an unexpected behavior. Although you need testing every function in your code and striving for 100% test coverage is important, there may still be edge cases that you have not thought to test for. So what, uh, what fuzzing allows you to do, it, it allows the Solidity test runner to randomly select arguments for your test functions, helping you uncover any potential issues, issues that you may have missed with traditional testing methods uh, and so Foundry lets you do exactly that. Like many other Ethereum development tools like Hardhat um, and other uh, other things like to, um, sorry, Truffle and uh, DAP tools, Foundry basically allows developers to fork against a remote network state by specifying a node URL. And if necessary, a block number for use um, with an archive node to pin test against a specific block. 
So that's basically how easy it is to use Foundry. Let's go ahead and install Foundry on our Mac OS. Here I'm using Mac OS. I can install using curl uh, foundry.paradigm.xyz and then uh, I can source my bash.rc file. Then I just need to do Foundry up and that's basically it. All right, now we can start using Foundry to start building, testing, deploying, and verifying uh, our smart contracts. So first we can create a Foundry project using Forge in it. Then we just navigate to our directory and here we have our uh, different directories here. So, so in our source directory, this is where our smart contracts are kept. Test directory, this is where we write our test. Script directory, this is where we store our Solidity scripts. Lib directory, this is similar to a node module directory and contains dependencies. And then last but not least, we have foundry.toml file. We use this file to configure uh, the behavior of our Foundry project. You can also use a different template to initialize your project. For instance, you can do something like forge init template, HTTPS. So there's a template called uh, let me see here. We have Foundry, RS, Forge, Template, Hello, uh, Template. So you can do that to initialize with um, the project here. So let me just go to Hello Template. And you can see here um, that it has an, um, contract.sol, contract.t.sol. So, you know, you can use different templates here. All right, let me just go back to my uh, Foundry Hello World. Here, um, what we can do next is we can actually build our project. So the way to do that is to just do forge build. And so it basically compiles the smart contract file. So by default, um, we already have the smart contracts here. Uh, so that's basically what's happening here. It's compiling the default smart contracts. Uh, if you see here under source, you can see here, this is the smart contract that's currently there right now. Um, so, uh, and then there's also test, the default test that comes with it. We have counter, counter test, test increment, test, set number, all of those things. So we can run the default test using forge test and it basically runs those tests, test increment, test set number. Uh, you'll notice that the two new directories have popped up. If you see there's out and cache, uh, the out directory contains your contract um, artifact uh, right here. And then um, such as the ABI while the cache directory uh, is used by Forge to only recompile what is necessary. So let's go ahead and use the contract we looked at in the beginning of this video and then run the test we also wrote. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the contract code um, and then I'm gonna be copying and pasting it here. So let me do that. All right, so I copied my foo.sol uh, contract here. This is the exact same that we were taking a look at in the beginning of this video. And then that's under source. And then under test, I um, added foo.t.sol with our um, basically, uh, you know, um, our test cases here. And then let's go ahead and uh, basically run a forge test on this. And it's basically gonna install the missing dependencies um, first, and then it's gonna run both the tests because we remember that, remember that we have two test files here, counter and foo. Uh, for for counter we have test increment test send that set number and then for foo we have test double test fail uh, double and both of them are passing um, so that's basically it there's nothing more to do now we didn't cover a lot of topics such as how dependencies are handled and and such so if you want to learn more about foundry and how to do more complex stuff feel free to look at the foundry book which is a work in progress but it has a lot of good info there i'll see you in the next video